But I'm re- I'm really excited about this episode. This is our first episode of Funniest Movies podcast. My co-host is Camilla, my wife, and she will answer some questions for you. She basically basically she's going to talk about some of her favorite parts of the movie. It was her first time watching the movie ever, and I'm really excited. I really I'm finally getting her into these types of parody movies. She's kind of got burned out like watching the scary movie movies, and I think that's kind of like what she's expected when she watches them. And the, don't get me wrong, I enjoy the scary movie movies, but they're not the same thing. They're not the same quality, not the same level. So I'm very excited that she's starting to watch these with me. So my references are IMDb, Reddit, Wikipedia, and I think that's it. See, I really like comedies that are like classic, not classic comedies, but a movie that's plot is supposed to be funny, you know, the classic concept of a comedy as opposed to a parody movie. So I really thought the plot was going to be quite nonsensical, but it wasn't. I really enjoyed that there were a lot of nonsensical concepts and moments that really added a lot of humor to the film, but it wasn't a nonsensical plot. There was an actual concept. There was an actual you know, plot line where we have a beginning, a middle, and an end instead of just like, look, we're making fun of this movie. Now we're making fun of this movie. And now we're being silly about this movie. Like, stuff is happening and I'm invested in what's happening. And I I care about the queen. I care that we don't let her die. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed that it was like kind of a silly... We're following the plot of a basic action film, but then it was a very dry, raw kind of comedy about that. And it is funny because it reminds me a lot of the kind of humor that my husband has in real life. And so I really did enjoy it quite a lot because he's the kind of guy that in that moment... When someone says something, he is the person that's like, I don't have an example off the top of my head, but it's funny and I really appreciated it. I enjoyed it quite a lot. I was surprised to see OJ Simpson because I have never seen him in a movie before. So it got me really curious. So OJ Simpson plays Nordberg, the guy who's shot in the first five minutes of the film. I don't really know the pre-trial O.J. Simpson, so I kind of wanted to look that up and see like what audiences at the time of Naked Gun were thinking and seeing. And O.J. Simpson was an NFL player, which I knew, but he played in the NFL for 11 seasons, mostly with the Buccaneers. And he is considered still to this day one of the best running backs of all time, which I thought was really impressive. Because when, <laughs> when you see the grown-up O.J. Simpson, I don't think running back. So that was kind of fun. And he was 20 when he was in his first movie. So he was in a lot of a lot of movies. He started when he was 20 in 1967. And then he was, like, pretty consistently in movies until 1994, which is when The Third Naked Gun came out. O.J. Simpson is now 76 years old, and that feels crazy because it doesn't feel like O.J. Simpson should be 76, but I guess he is, and that's where we're at. And then also prior to Stephen, prior to my husband getting into Leslie Nelson movies and me, you know, being into my husband... The only thing I knew Leslie Nelson from was Mr. Magoo. And I don't know if I ever stayed awake for that whole movie because it was like, you know, something the babysitter puts on or, you know, one of those movies I'd watch with my cousins. Um, so I figured I would do some research or learn some things about Frank Drebin, Leslie Nelson. Um, he's Canadian. I didn't know that. That's so fun. He's Canadian. And he's not just like a little bit Canadian. He's like pretty Canadian. His brother was a deputy prime minister. Or was the deputy prime minister, I guess, is how you would say that. In 2002, Leslie Nelson was appointed officer of the Order of Canada. 
And that, I don't totally understand what that is, but that's what Wikipedia said. And he was awarded that for his contribution to the film industry, which is really cool because he contributed a lot. He did a lot for comedy and different concepts of comedy. So I thought that was really cool. He just like brought a whole new genre of of movies to Hollywood, which is amazing. He was born February 11th, 1926. He's very Canadian, but he spent his final days in Florida because that's what you do when you get old is you go to Florida where it's warm and you don't have to worry about slipping and falling on ice. So he spent his final days in Florida, which is awesome. I love Florida. Can I just say that? But so he passed away in Florida in 2010 at the ripe old age of 84. Just quality, quality man. Um, So <laughs> following the plot line of the movie a little bit, when <laughs> Frank Drebin goes to Ludwig's house and you see the fish in the fish tank, I was like, what is <laughs> just the little like bits that are happening with the fish um, where Ludwig like eventually like you see him just kind of fascinated and looking at them and different things. But then eventually Ludwig stabs one and like pulls it out of <laughs> the tank. Right. So I was like, OK, I need to know more about this fish. It's a lion fish. Very appropriately a bad guy pet because it's. It's poisonous, right? So the spines on a lionfish <laughs> are poisonous. If you get stung, it can irritate your skin, can cause redness and swelling and pain. But also him like poking it with a fork and like, I don't know what he was doing, but you know, made me curious. They can be safely consumed. <laughs> So if you prepare your fish, your lionfish correctly, you can eat it. And also, I had heard that the lionfish was endangered. That's originally why I was looking it up. Because I was like, oh, is does he have like endangered exotic pets? And he doesn't. It's actually an invasive species in California and around the United States. The lionfish is only native to Hawaii and not the other tropical areas that our coasts cover here in the U.S. and even the peninsula of Mexico. By eating his lionfish, he was doing a service to the country as long as he didn't release any of his pet fish into the ocean. Because if he did that, then he's adding, then he added to the epidemic that is the invasive species. So that's a fun fact. Like, so many lionfish. I wonder if people saw this movie back then and were like, oh, a lionfish, and then they had them, and then they were like, actually, these are, like, if I'm going to have fish in a tank, these are a hard one to have because if they poke me, ouch. And then they were like, you know what? I'll just release them into the ocean. And then bada-bing, bada-boom. Invasive species. That takes us from The Office to the beautiful Jane Spencer, played by Priscilla Presley. So Priscilla Presley, my my Stephen knew this, but I did not, that she was the wife of Elvis Presley. So she is currently 78 years old, but she married Elvis Presley when she was 22 in 1967. They were married for six years until Elvis passed away. And she became the, like, point man on his estate and stuff. So she is a former chairperson and co-founder of Elvis Presley Enterprises. So she grew Graceland into what it is today, which is one of America's top tourist destinations. And I just think that's amazing. She really, like, that's a hard thing. That's a hard thing to lose your true love after only six years of marriage and so young. If she got married when she was 22 and they were married for six years. She was a widow before she was 30. 
And she still had this amazing career and grew this awesome enterprise and just what an American icon. Like, she's so fantastic. Speaking of American icons, okay, Ricardo, and I know I'm saying his last name wrong, Mont Montalaban. I don't know how to pronounce names. I'm so sorry. But the man who plays Vincent Ludwig, what? And obviously, he's a Mexican icon, Mexican-American icon. He was born in Mexico City in 1920. But he has played many a heartthrob, many a villain, and he has starred in classics such as... <laughs> I almost want to go backwards. I will because it's funnier that way. Such as the 1974 Wonder Woman, the Mark of Zorro, not the Mask of Zorro, not the one with Antonio Benderes. So the Mark of Zorro, um, Sweet Charity, Planet of the Apes, and the ultimate classics, Spy Kids 2 and 3. But that joking part aside, like Sweet Charity and Wonder Woman, the original classic, 1974. And I don't think those are even the coolest parts about him. That's a, Those are five brief, six technically, brief highlights of his career. But he has been in so many films and so many things. Like, it's... He's an icon. It's amazing. Like, classic things. He's so cool. But even with all of those accomplishments, I think the coolest thing about him is that he married the love of his life, Georgiana Young, when he was 24, okay? They were only, they were pretty young. He was 24. They had four kids together, and they stayed together lovingly and happily until their deaths, until she passed away in 2007, and he passed away two years later in 2009 when he was 88 years old. I just think that's really, really sweet, because you don't hear that a whole lot in Hollywood, especially these days, that they got married and that they were happy together and just had a beautiful family. I think it's really cool. And I think it's fun, too, that the villain is like had this happy real life, you know? Speaking of him being the villain... <laughs> The whole hypnosis <laughs> concept in this movie, it's something that has scared me <laughs> throughout my life. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, like post-Cold War America, I guess. Just this fear of being able to be hypnotized. I don't know. <laughs> it's something I've been a little bit afraid of. And I've looked it up in on different occasions. But like, I don't know about everybody else. In my family, I grew up watching a lot of documentaries. And some of them were, like, weird Cold War documentaries where you learn, like, <laughs> the different strange things that the U.S. did with <laughs> cats or apparel during the Cold War and spies and stuff. So I had to look up hypnosis <laughs> if this concept had ever actually happened or been a thing. And hypnosis these days is a legitimate like form of therapy for people suffering with like PTSD or anxiety. But it's not like a thing where your brain shuts off or like goes to a totally different area. It's like being asleep with the TV, like half asleep with the TV on kind of, and somebody guides you through like this meditative state, right? So being hypnotized isn't going to make it so that you do things that are outside of your control. <laughs> I don't know why I had to look that up, but I did. I was like actually nervous about it. So nobody has ever had a trigger go off on their watch and been like, okay, I've got to kill the queen. And that probably sounds silly that I had to look it up because clearly that's a comedic part of the movie because nobody does that. <laughs> but I looked it up. We're all safe really fast. I wanted to just 
talk about some of my some of the highlights. So the first one, obviously, in the very first action sequence <laughs> was when Nordberg was shot, but not the part where he was shot or even the part where he <laughs> fell against the different things, but when he ended up in the wedding cake. And I was like, this is some quality comedy right here because the absurdity is just so quality. When they go to interview people on the docks, Frank Drebin and his partner are interviewing people on the docks and he finds his informant and they pass the money back and forth. I just, these are the things that are missing from movies <laughs> these days. It was so funny. Can you spot me a 20? Here. Uh, you know, like just the back and forth. It's... And the way that Leslie Nelson could deliver these lines so straight, so dryly, like, I just, it's so impressive. Because a lot of actors struggle with overacting, and I know for a fact that if I was in that situation, I would overact. I just would. It's too hard not to. <laughs> So it's very impressive to me that he can just play it so straight. Very impressive. Obviously, I truly enjoyed the bits with the lionfish because I thought it was hilarious. I don't know, something about it. But also when Frank Drebin is in Ludwig's office by himself with the vases, with the vases, <laughs> and he breaks all of them. And everything sets on fire. It reminded me a lot of Steve Martin in, what is it? Is it Father of the Bride that he does that bit where he's in the bathroom and things just keep getting worse and worse and worse. And obviously, both of these instances are heightened and dramatized. But I feel like we've all had that situation where you're like, in a public restroom or you're in somebody else's house and something starts to go wrong and then it just never gets better and it just gets worse <laughs> until you're thoroughly embarrassed or you just secretly leave. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I just live <laughs> a, comedic, a comedic life or maybe I just am a mess, but it's definitely happened to me before. When I've been in an uncomfortable situation at someone else's house. So I really enjoyed that portion. I also just enjoyed the queen. I really should have looked more up about the actress that played her. But the way that they played around her and with her, I thought was really, really fun and funny. Because if you think about Queen Elizabeth, she is not a silly kind of lady. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so, so proper and so everything a queen should be. It was really, I think that was a really good plot point that they put in the film just because, just because she <laughs> is such a straight man to be able to put all this comedy against and this concept of the craziness happening around her. And I guess that's why they do that in so many, not so many movies, but I feel like there's quite a few movies where it's like, oh, the royal family is under attack. Or maybe it's just Cars 2. I don't know. But I thought that was really funny. All of this silly stuff just being pitted against the royal family. <laughs> funny concept. So those were my highlights. I had never seen this movie before, and I really, I really enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would, because I've seen a couple clips from it that obviously I thought were funny. But sometimes when you see clips or you see even a trailer that are that's really good, in your mind, sometimes it's like, oh, well, that's like, those are the highlights of the movie. That's the whole movie. And sometimes that's what happens. You know, you see a trailer and you see all of these sequences and that was the whole movie. That was it. 
And I was kind of nervous that that was going to be the situation with Naked Gun, that I had seen all of the highlights already. But then there were so many highlights, so many things, little moments that I was able to enjoy. And it's fun because I'll get to see this. I'm going to watch this movie again. I really enjoyed it. The little nuggets that you get to enjoy later. The hopscotch (laughs) as you walk down the street. Like, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. And the discussion with Nordberg's wife, like, oh my word. That was so, just little parts of it were so funny. So I'm very excited to watch this movie again someday. I try not to watch movies too close together. So it'll probably be a second, but it was enjoyable. I will be watching Naked Gun 2. So there's a TV show called M Squad, and the Zucker brothers thought it would be funny to make a police parody off of that movie. So, or that TV show, sorry. So they started to, like, they started to pitch the idea to Paramount, and Paramount was like, okay, well, yeah, what's the plot? And they weren't quite sure what they wanted the plot to be. They just kind of knew they wanted it to parody this tv show m squad so they started trying to make the idea of it and then and then paramount was like how about we just make it into a tv show instead of a movie you can have six episodes to start with and so that's what they did so if you go look at police squad you will see that there's a lot of very like striking similarities to the movie m squad or the tv show m squad so it's really fun to watch because it's like basically you're watching police squad and then there's not comedy. And it's like you're expecting the comedy and the, and the puns and the jokes, and you just don't get it. So when Police Squad was released, its reception was really bad. People didn't really understand the, the humor. They didn't understand the comedy. And eventually, only I mean, after four episodes, they decided to cancel it. And then two more came out because um, they had already made the six. But after four were released, they're like, we're done. This isn't going to work which is such a sad thing. I mean, Airplane had just come out. It's very similar type comedy to Airplane. And Airplane was successful, but this one was not. So they couldn't figure out what the issue was. And it stopped. People just weren't, like, getting the jokes, I guess. They weren't understanding the humor of it. And unfortunately, it just didn't work out. They, I mean, so they made some other movies. And then they decided they wanted to kind of revisit this police squad idea. And... They brought it back to Paramount with one little change. And the change was that they wanted to have a love interest. And because of that, that for some reason gave them the green light to do a movie. So they started to come up with a title and they decided on, they had a bunch of different titles and Naked Gun was what they they decided to use. They changed it because they didn't want any confusion with the show Police Academy. And the reason why they decided on Naked Gun was because it... It promised on so much more than it could potentially even deliver, is what they said. Another thing is, that's funny, and and there's not really any sources that say that this is for sure what happened, but, um, so Get Smart, there's like a second series. So Get Smart's a TV show. Um, the, I think the movie's well, more well known, but in, in 1965, there was a TV show called Get Smart that the movie's based on. So there's a follow-up television show to Get Smart called The Naked, or sorry, The Nude Bomb. And it's kind of similar humor, comedy, that kind of stuff. So some people are saying that maybe the Naked Gun kind of got it from there, just like similar type gags and stuff like that. So you never know. But I think that that probably had something to do with it, too. Just some stuff about filming. They ended up writing the show backwards. They kind of decided we're going to have the queen be involved and we're going to have the queen have an assassination attempt at a baseball game. Like that was kind of like the main idea. And then they worked backwards to make the movie. And what's funny is that the Dodgers stadium is actually where it was filmed. And since it was filmed during like the Dodgers season, the movie was, they actually had to film the baseball scene first before all the other scenes. So that's kind of a fun fact. And um, it's fun to watch the show and see that they were, you know, know that they were filming that part first. And then one of the funnier scenes in there is when uh, Frank gets hit in the head with a baseball bat. And it's funny because actually Mel Brooks, that was his idea for that gag, which is, it was like his, his input for the movie. They're like, oh, you should have him get hit in the head with a baseball bat, which is funny. One of the best cameos is the Zucker brother's mom. She's actually in the movie as the secretary. So the secretary where she gets, she's like the first person to test out the 
control, like the mind control for the assassination and stuff. So the secretary, that's actually the Zucker brothers mother, which is really funny um, that she's willing to do that. It kind of shows like maybe that's part of the reason they got their humor. Their mom's willing to do that kind of stuff. And her name is Charlotte Zucker. There were only three actors that came from police squad to naked gun. I wonder why, first of all, I, I think probably it had to do with it not being successful police squad, which is sad, but I think the movie had some pretty good characters. I, I, I don't love Ed from police squad, the actor. He's not my favorite character. He's good, but he's not as good as George Kennedy who plays Ed in the movie. So, I mean, a couple of the changes were good. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of OJ Simpson. He's not the funniest in, as far as comedy goes, but so yeah, so the characters that were re recast OJ Simpson replaced Peter Lupus as Nordberg. And they actually changed the spelling of the name Nordberg for that, which I didn't know until I just did this research. And then George Kennedy replaced Alan North. And then Leslie Nelson is the same. He's one of the three. And Ed Williams as Ted Olson is the same. And Tiny Ron as Al. So the really tall guy. And Ted Olson is like the scientist guy who always makes inappropriate jokes in Police Squad. I don't think he has... Maybe I'm missing it, but I, I don't think he has inappropriate jokes in the movie. I, maybe he does. I just can't think of any. If he does, let me know what they are. I just forgot. Those are the ones that came. And um, they have like one scene together. And it's really funny. Just the three of them. One of the main things that the Zucker brothers did is they cast three serious actors. So Leslie Nelson, George Kennedy, and OJ Simpson. And Leslie Nelson had been in comedy before airplane. That was his only comedy and then police squad. So this was really his, one of his first comedy things. And they, it worked so well with airplane and having cast so many serious actors in airplane that they decided to do it again. And one thing that's funny is that George Kennedy actually wanted this job so bad that he, like he, he was asking for it and begging for it basically. Cause he stars in, the airport movies, which are basically like disaster airplane movies and airplane is actually parodying those movies. Like the, the main thing that airplane parodies is the movie called zero hour, but it also has references to those movies, the airport movies, which George Kennedy really wanted to be an airplane. And he was bummed that he missed the opportunity to parody himself. And he wanted to have that opportunity, but he never did. So when he found out they were doing another one, he's like, I want to be in the movie. So, and he honestly does such a good job in the movie. Uh, it's very impressive the way that he acts. And Leslie Nelson, obviously. But George Kennedy, it's cool that they got another actor to, to do it too. OJ Simpson. Uh, so just him being like a sports person, I feel like sometimes it's difficult for sports people to, to transfer over to movies. And this one specifically, he doesn't do as much acting because he's in a coma for most of it. But he's not the best I feel like uh, it's still good that they got a serious actor for him, but like his character is not my favorite. I think I do like the Nordberg from police squad better, but it's hard to say the Nordberg from police squad has a lot funnier lines to me, but he's still, he's still good. He still does good. And those are the three cast members that I think really make the show. Um, Priscilla Presley does a very good job too. She's also a serious actor that was brought over and she does a great job in her, in her role. Okay. So last week I made a post asking you to ask your questions about naked gun. Basically like, what do you want me to answer? What do you want me to research is naked gun based off of a movie specifically? So from what I found, there's a lot of references in naked gun to other movies. I wouldn't say that there's like a specific movie that it is about, but it is obviously based on police squad, which it's basically the remake of police squad and police squad is based heavily on M squad. I'm going to post on my Instagram page, the introduction to M squad and maybe like put police squad after like, just like on top M squad, police squad. And then just, you can watch the introductions for police squad M squad and maybe some other ones, maybe some other clips because they're hilarious and they're so eerily similar that it's just so fun to watch. And they did bring a couple of those bits over, but, and there's also a lot of other clips in Naked Gun that are very specific to other movies, but I wouldn't say it's like a specific 
movie. And if, if, if I'm wrong, please let me know. I would love to know if there's like a specific movie because I love to watch it. I had somebody ask me, what is funny about the ankle bracelet jo- uh, joke? A lot of people on the internet have asked this question. I Googled it. I'm like, what is funny about the ankle bracelet joke? And it's actually just a reference to a movie. So there's a movie called Double Indemnity. And in that movie, so there's a character named Walter Neff. And he sees this beautiful woman. She's on the top of the stairs, staircase. And he has like an inner dialogue that's really weird and really awkward about the lady. And it's like, what in the heck are you doing, dude? And it's so awkward and it makes Naked Gun so much funnier because when Leslie Nelson sees her walking down the stairs and then she falls down the stairs and he just has his like inner dialogue. I mean, it's not right at that time, but it's still just like very, very similar staircase, very similar shots. Uh, it's so funny to watch Naked Gun after watching that spot. And then when he gets to the bottom of the stairs, so when she gets to the bottom of the stairs in um, Double in, in Indemnity, sorry, that's hard for me to say. He says, that's the honey of an ankle bracelet you're wearing. And then, of course, Frank says to Jane, hey, that's a honey of an ankle bracelet you have there. And then they make the little joke about how did it get down there? So pretty funny really funny making fun of that awkward scene because it really is awkward scene and i feel like a lot of the really weird scenes like that in the zucker brothers movies like the pilot on an airplane just being a super creepy pedophile very accurate to zero hour if you watch zero hour and the pilot he has a boy come up and it's like why are you being so creepy dude what what's going on so it's not like it's not as random as it seems it's like they're making fun of these movies very specifically like these are weird parts why did you put this in your movie and they're putting it in their movie like see how weird it can be we're putting in a parody movie and it seems weird and it's it's hilarious but in the serious movies it's like no this is what we put in the movie we decided to put this in the movie so that's kind of the answer to that question hopefully that answers that Okay, somebody said it would be cool to know how many jokes used in Police Squad were reused in the Naked Gun series. How many per movie? And I don't have like an exact answer to your question because I'm specifically just talking about the first Naked Gun movie today. And I kind of just went off of my memory on this one. I need to actually go back through and make maybe maybe make like a post about this and see which ones are like really reused and maybe just do like a side-by-side video comparison. And I'm trying to think of the best way to answer this without using videos. And I decided to add some of my highlights, some of my favorite ones. The first one is when Frank is talking to Al and he, he walks on the screen. You can't see anything but his chest because he's so tall. And he's like, hey, there's something on your face and it's a half a banana and it falls down. And then in Naked Gun, they do that same scene. And that's like the one scene that has the three characters that came from police squad in naked gun. So it's like, if you watch that scene, it's where, where he has the, maybe I'll post this one too, where he has the banana on his face. That's kind of the one. And it's really funny. Uh, for me, I posted it like a little bit ago. And a lot of people were like, I don't get this joke. And I, I think it's hilarious. Cause I don't know. I just do. But so that's one of the ones that comes, comes over. Another one is just a very similar gag. It's not exactly the same. But in the first episode of Police Squad, when uh, Mrs. Twice throws the wig at Frank and he like kind of grabs his face and it's like, it's like, it's like the most pain he's ever been in is kind of how he acts, which is honestly probably my favorite part of, I don't want to say Police Squad because it probably that, that episode at least, you know, but that happens in, um, I think it might happen again in another Naked Gun movie, but in this one, it happens. In, in, in the first one, when he goes to rescue Nord- Nordberg, he goes to the hospital and the assassin is like attacking him and is trying to suffocate him. He throws the pillow at Frank and Frank like grabs his face like he's going to die. And it's just hilarious. So that's another gag they move over from Police Squad. Okay, so another person asked, how much of the Naked Gun movie is scripted and how much is improvised? And looking at Leslie Nelson specifically, because it was geared toward Leslie Nelson, like Leslie Nelson's hilarious. He's a comedy actor. How much of his lines was scripted versus improvised? And it, it seems it looks it looks like based on my research 
that it was all just scripted. And if you watch some of the clips that are like the parodying other movies, they're basically word for word from the original movies. So they wanted to keep a very specific script. And since he was a serious actor, I think he kind of just left the writing to the to the writers and he just used those things word for word. And my wife had the comment. She's like, what an actor that can make these lines that seem improvised that are not actually improvised. Like these are lines that he's been given and memorized and practiced. And it seems like he came up with them on the fly. And it's an impressive talent that he has. It's a really cool thing because it really makes it seem like they're improvised, but it's just something that he's just memorized and he's doing. And props to the to the writers of the show. You know, the, you know, it's they're hilarious. They're perfect. Just the casting is awesome. Which brings up the the remake that they're doing of the movie. So I think it's technically going to be a fourth installment of the Naked Gun franchise, which not sure how I feel about any of it, but I'm going to watch it and I'm excited about it. I can't help but be excited about it, whether I want it to come or not. Uh, so from what I've heard, this could be not true. This could be rumors and I could just be spreading false stuff. But Liam Neeson is going to be like a Frank Jr. type thing. I've also heard that he's going to be Frank Drebin, no, re no relation to the other Frank Drebin, which I think might even be funnier than like him being his son. Just like Frank Drebin. No relation to other Frank Trevin. But I, from what I understand, Seth MacFarlane is going to team up with Zucker Brothers to get it done, which I like. I like the idea of that. So we'll see how that goes. It seems like it, it's something that will be fun. The last thing I want to talk about from just the last thing I want to add, just a funny thing. So Reggie Jackson is the is actual baseball player who played... Who, who played himself in the, in the movie where he is the one who's going to assassinate the queen because he is, you know, in a trance. And he actually tweeted in 2022 when, when Queen Elizabeth actually passed away, he tweeted, now we all know I was innocent. Amen. Rest in peace, Queen E, which is awesome. I just love the inside jokes that just keep going and going and that it's just a movie that people can just enjoy for generations and quote. I also like the kind of cult following where it's just like we can just reference to each other and a lot of people don't understand what the quotes are about. It's just a fun vibe. And I'm grateful to kind of be a part of this this like group that loves loves it. So uh, next week we are going to do Hot Shots. My wife has not seen Hot Shots ever. So she's going to watch it with me. Basically, she's going to, at the beginning of each podcast, kind of give, like she did with this episode, a review of what she thought of the movie. And please don't be harsh to her in the comments if she doesn't like it as much as you like it. But she's kind of just going to go based on what she thought it was going to be, what it was, and how she enjoyed it, what kind of parts she enjoyed, what aspects she liked. So go ahead and get prepared by watching Hot Shots. I love it. I love Hot Shots. I think I might like the sequel even better, but it's hard to say. I like that I like that they just made it completely different. So, thank you. I appreciate you listening. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I post more episodes.